Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming today. And today we're interviewing Mrs. Virginia Pina, a famous local artist here in our town and a very, very proud woman. And a, we're just so happy to have her. So, Virginia, welcome. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we're just going to ask you some questions, and yes. if you'd be kind to share whatever you'd like to share. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your um, your parents and your grandparents, and uh, where do they originate from, mm -hmm. and what made them want to come to Harwich? Uh, my grandparents came over 18, I'm not sure if it's 80, in the 80s or 75, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but I, uh, my grandfather was probably 10 years my grandma's okay. senior, uh -huh. and she brought her mother with her, because okay. my grandmother and grandfather were married in uh -huh. the old country, okay. and she was with the child, uh -huh. and, and this was all new. They know nothing about boats, nothing water, anything like okay. that. So um, they brought their, uh, my grandmother brought her mother to be the midwife in case the birthing happened uh, on the ship at sea. Uh -huh. you know? So that's when they came over. They came to Howard due to, there must have been someone here okay. just got, sort of sponsored mm -hmm. them. You always needed that. Mm -hmm. You have to have someone to, 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 to go to. All right. You right. know, you yeah. just couldn't come and, you know, uh -huh. or whatever. But uh, um, it, it happened they chose Howard because the news had started. There's cranberry bogs and yet there's farming. Right. There's lots of land and there's lots of trees. So you could live off the land. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather came and, and, and settled here in Howard. It's the only place they uh, they, they lived. So, oh, okay. All their lives was in Howard. And um, my mom is the oldest, was the oldest of the girls. Yeah. And, uh, and then six. When I was a little girl before preschool, yeah. I can remember being in the house with my grandmother and the family, and at that time, there were 14 children. Okay. Yeah, she lost some, uh, you and know, uh, what, probably stillborn or uh, right. soon. How many did your grandmother have in total? Uh, there's two, uh, two uh, numbers. Okay. Uh, as someone, like they say, oh, she had 21 children. Yes. That's counting the, uh, the, the miscarriage okay. in the whole. But when I was a little girl, I yeah. remember living in there with them, and there was 14 living. Wow. They were all my seniors, because they were my mother's. Yeah. My mother just happened to be the oldest of the girls. Okay. Yeah, and she had a brother Snow uh -huh. and Nathaniel before her. Snow's name was interesting. How when they started, you know, they started over, uh, my grandmother didn't realize there was a, a, a temperature change. Okay. She was always warm there, okay. and uh, they had uh, rain, but it was scarce. It, mm -hmm. It's a very poor place for farming. So when they are on the ship, people speak of putting slaves in the bottom right, and the hole. The mm -hmm. My grandmother and grand great grandmother couldn't speak English, couldn't understand it. Okay. So everything was frightening and right. very foreign. Right. My grandfather could could understand a little because he could read and write. Okay. That was mm -hmm. his mission, I guess. Mm -hmm. But all in all, the captain called and said, uh, "Supper, okay. meaning is supper dinner, like what we call uh, dinner. dinner. Yeah. Every uh -huh. household has supper or uh, dinner, or whatever. Right. Uh -huh. And then supper, meaning uh, dinner served. Right. My grandmother got frightened, uh, her mother frightened, because supper in Cape Verdean means to cut. Oh, okay. So when they never heard it from a, a, a different a culture or right. a person, uh -huh. so uh, they got frightened. But that's one of the fears she had. She said, I thought, sure, they were going to kill us. Oh, okay. Because, and she was always frightened. That right. fear goes through a whole family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the she was expecting her child any time. But as oh. they got nearer to their destination, right. She was holding back, holding back. So when she got into the country, not soon after she got, got in and, and established, I think, uh, this house that they lived all their life, she had a son. Okay. Yeah. They named him Snow. Okay. Because it, when that man called down to the whole, come on up for supper, yes. it was snowing. Oh, and when okay. they came up, she said it was, and they explained to her, it was snow. Snow. 
So she named her firstborn. I often no. wondered how he had that yeah. name, but yeah. I didn't yeah. know if it was just yeah. a nickname yeah. or not. No. Okay. He never liked a story to be public because oh. you said, you know, he was. But I think it's wonderful. I think that's very. She never nice. saw snow. She never felt yeah. it. And, yeah. And she held off until. Oh, that's kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. I never so, knew anyway, that. Yeah. That one I had. But so no. I'm, I'm, yeah. my mom, I think she said nine children, but I only knew four, oh, four, four, five, four, yeah. five. But okay. uh, she lost some when they and were. And one of your aunts is still alive today. Uh, my aunt, yes, yes, my aunt Ella is the last living, and, and she's, she's 95 and going strong. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, Lovely yeah, lady yeah, as well. She's yes, a good person. She's a good person. Yeah. Okay, could you tell us a little bit, what was it like for you like as a kid living on Kelly Street, as a child, as a teenager? You know, Kelly Street has a bad name in a sense, but it was never that bad. Okay. The reason it was called Kelly Street there was a family by the name of Kelly mm -hmm. that lived there, and they mingled and so forth. So when anything happened, they'd say, go down Kelly Street. So right. we got the brunt of a lot of things. That, uh, never, Kelly Street was never mad, uh, bad right, to me. Right. I was, uh, it was good. <laughs> but it was always Main Street, and right. uh, it was during a town meeting that uh -huh. uh, one of my aunts got up and said, I want this, you know, I'd like to talk about the street. Right. Because we get a lot of slack from this, you know, yeah. whatever happened. So, But, uh, yeah, and I can remember taking the bus going to the first grade and from my grandmother's okay. house. Now, where did you go to school? When, when and uh, Well, we went to North Howard. You North had Howard the school. first six <laughs> grades. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone in the village mm -hmm. uh, went there. And uh, when you finished the sixth grade, if you... Uh, you know, you did well and you promoted to the seventh, you had to go to Howard Center, okay. which is the building now is the cultural center. Okay, yes. It was built in 1937. Right. Yeah. Right. So that would have been our further education. Yeah. But uh, I went to school in a, three grades in one room, mm -hmm. upstairs and downstairs. There were no facilities. There was just a back building for that. Uh -huh. And it was a pump. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and we had a round belly stove for heating. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it was primitive, but we got through it. But you got through it. It was, everyone did it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So, That's yeah. Really good. But I did get out of that. I finished sixth grade, and I went into the seventh grade. Uh -huh. Now, that's where the new life really started. Began. Okay. Yeah. It was entirely different. Uh, I thought it was wonderful. One of my favorite teachers was Ada Lovering. Oh, yes, I remember, you know, yes. Uh -huh. She was beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and there was um, uh, the minister's daughter, Farum. Okay, Mrs. Farum. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, she was an English teacher. Okay. And I couldn't wait to get in her class because she uh, taught Shakespeare. Okay. So yeah. one was literature and the other one was grammar. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So I did a few years in that school and I left went to work okay you know and that was uh, earning enough money to buy your own clothes and that sort of thing my mother uh, when she married and uh, she had uh, i was the oldest of my mom's girls yes and yeah. uh, she built a house uh, that i'm in today i live in the garage of that little house that my mother built Okay. And it was four rooms. Okay. Yeah, and uh, my dad was away. She, she raised us. Uh, she was a single parent. Okay. And uh, but life changed when I went to work. Okay. Why did yeah. it change? What was different? Because you went to work at something. Howard Howardsport. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I always wanted something. I don't know what it was. Okay. And it was never close. I still today it doesn't phase me to have the better car or anything like that. Okay. I always but there was something. I don't know what it was. It maybe, well, anyway, I went to work and I learned to do the the uh, not the things that I didn't have home. We didn't have a vacuum cleaner. We didn't have uh, there was no TV. There was a telephone. We didn't have. But here we, it was all available to me. Okay. And so I just had to work. So I had more fun working really, but I had to come home at first, you know, because right. we had. But you were exposed to a lot yeah, of things yeah. that were different. Yeah, it was yeah. different. Uh -huh. So I gravitated to the working so okay. much more. I knew this. Right. You know, but this was always something new. So it's I, I like, but that's where I learned that I was learning. Right. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, some, you know. Something was new. I, something was new. Uh -huh. And I grasped it, and I could get it. Good. 
no, yeah, and yeah. It, well, and I'm not sorry. I never stopped learning. Well, that was good. That was a yeah. mm -hmm. great experience yeah. for you. Yeah, and, yeah. I, it's, it's, and I had four brothers. I'm the only one of my ch my mother's children, you know, around still. That's still, that's yeah. still with us. Yeah. But, oh. uh, well, you've done very well. Uh, so uh, it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have three lovely children mm -hmm. and one uh, niece that you raised. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and they're all very successful. Can you kind of tell us what was your secret? Because all well, four being of them the boss are... is really dangerous. Yeah. You know, and if it brings a lot of fear. Yeah. And I, we came from the little fear. Uh -huh. Very shy. We came from that. So, ruling something, being in control, yes. was natural for me. Okay. I was eight and a half when my mother went to work, and I yeah. had four brothers to take care of. Okay. So that putting Gave me some in training. mother's place. Yes. I was always old mm -hmm. because my mother wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, it was mm -hmm. you. You had this to do. It's the way life was. So I think that made me sometimes too strong. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. sometimes too strong. But uh, yes, I married Jack, uh, and uh, we've been married 68 years. That's great. It's yeah. a record uh, in today's uh, yeah, society. Uh, oh. He, yeah, well, I don't think he can. He'll eat anywhere else but home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he, they, yeah, they're a nice family. I uh, learned a lot there. My sister-in-law and all. Yeah. But well, um, tell us a little bit about the the, the kids because uh, all uh, four of them have been extremely successful. Yeah. How about start with Paul? We'll, we'll, well work our way. Having Paul early, right away, and uh, I really didn't realize how serious it was. Mm -hmm. I'm gifted with some, my guardian angel has worked real hard, because mm -hmm. I think it's a forerunner for me, <laughs> because things that I got into, I, you know, well, anyway, and I believe I have faith in, mm -hmm. you know, there's something guiding me. Well, you know, we, Paul and Jack and I had a, our first child named uh, born in Hyannis, Paul Pina. He was born with a challenge, and it was visual, mm -hmm. and um, they told us from the beginning that uh, don't... Um, don't uh, think this is going to be better. It okay. will get worse. All right. And well, they, you know that's a hard thing for a doctor. But he did me a favor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't build up false hope. Uh, hope. Mm -hmm. And Paul was um, he was intelligent to begin with. Very. Because very. He was questioning. Well, one of the things that was strange was. Giving him up, you know, driving him to Mass General mm -hmm. uh, whenever. We didn't have those facilities here. Right. And there was a doctor that came there from Mass General to Hyannis. And right after Paul was born, he said, this boy has to be. It's So our lives were really running back and forth to Mass General. Right. He, in all his time, as long as when I was in charge, he must have had about 27 operations. Wow. It wasn't to give him vision. Mm -hmm. It was to keep the pressure down because that was very painful. Right. Uh, like he ex he explained to me, not the doctor, Paul right. did. Your eye has a front door and a back door. It has a fluid that goes in the front door, rinses it out, and goes out the mm -hmm. back door. But his the tissues would no sooner they lanced it to keep the door mm -hmm. open, it would grow back. It okay. was a cancerous type of thing, but not what we know today of the, right. the organs and yeah. that sort right. of thing. So he was always having them lance, thinking if they could keep it open. Yeah. So. Uh, then he decided along the way, I don't think I'll have any more of those operations. Okay. I'm not going to have it. How old was he when he made that decision? Well, do you Paul think? might have been 12 years okay. old. Okay. Uh -huh. He was suffering the pain. Mm -hmm. And I said, and it isn't going to be, he's not going to see. Right. So, you Why know, put him through it? Well, I said, Paul, uh -huh. how do you feel about it? He said, I'll give up my vision before I give up my hearing. Okay. And uh -huh. that's the music. Okay. That's, you know, no, he, was, he became a phenomenal musician. Yeah, so Paul has traveled. Yeah. You know, so can his, you tell us a little bit about that and well, how he picked up the skills? And yeah. Well, first I'll give credit to Jimmy and Peter being born. Oh, okay. That makes <laughs> Paul sense. Paul was by maybe about <laughs> nine years. Not quite nine. Then we had a, a wonderful son named James. Yes. And three, three years later, we had Peter. Right. And uh, uh, then, uh, as luck would have it, and I know it's uh, luck, one day a little girl called me on the phone and she asked me, can I come live with you? Okay. And that was Rosanna. Yes. That was Jack's niece. And she did come. Uh -huh. And so I caught my, I Cops credit blessings. myself to Paul. Yes. Oh, yeah. So she is, she is, and she really is a blessing. So Paul went to Perkins. Right. And we drove him back and forth. I thought it wasn't easy, but to drive him 
we we'd go get him every Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. We'd bring him over for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We drove him back Sunday. Right. My point was, I didn't want to give up my culture, and right. I wanted him to grow up with his brothers. Right. You know, so we, it meant a lot of driving, but it pays off. It does. He was never really separated mm -hmm. from the two worlds, but yet he had to live in two worlds. Right. So right. he had to be trained to live in the uh, Caucasian world. Right. But I wasn't going to let go of Cape Verdean mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. He spoke fluently. I remember. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and he was he was my mentor. That yes. Really, yes. Yeah. So then uh, well, he graduated there. But uh, in the meantime, he went to Clark University. Mm -hmm. But we did a year and a, another half a year, and it wasn't successful. Okay. He I had already got a taste of music. He loved it. Yeah. And he loved when it. he went to school uh -huh. at, at Clark's, I had to. Let, a man go, not a child. Right, right. It was always a child, but the school said you were not. We're not babysitters. Right. You know, so that was difficult. Yeah. And uh, so he got married soon, and he went on his search career, his yeah, music career. He did some amazing mm -hmm. things. But the last, yeah. he's done a lot. He was one of the first Americans to go to Tuva, mm -hmm. which is part of uh, Russia, mm -hmm. and because he studied the language by phone and ra radio uh -huh. and tapes. And he planned to go to Tuva, mm -hmm. took, a, took six people with him. He was the only blind one, and he had to bring them out of, Germany, out of Russia. Russia. Mm -hmm. oh, he and he yeah, came back. And the blind one took him and brought them back. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was interesting. Today, uh, uh, Jack and I are very proud, and the boys. Yes. Uh, the royalties that Paul would have gotten yeah. will come to us. That's and nice. He's now taking care of us. That's, isn't See, that nice? What goes See, around. what goes around comes yeah, around. Yeah. That's and true. then Jimmy was... Yeah. A, uh, Jim, Jimmy, yeah, tell us about James. Cause James, James went to uh, the school in Dartmouth before it became Dartmouth, UMass. Uh -huh. There was... Um, I don't know the title of it. He went to the college in Dartmouth for years. Okay. He, and he, um, his uh, major was engineering. Okay. Then along comes Peter. Yes. yes. And Peter went to Bridgewater and he's yes. teaching in Bridgewater. Rosanna, my gift, along with them, um, she stayed with me. Uh, from that time, she came with, to me maybe just before 17, okay. finished high school. Uh -huh. And then she suffered a great loss. She lost her mother and she lost her, her dad. dad yes. So then I knew she was, wasn't going anywhere. She came and stayed. And she's still there because yes. she still comes all the time. She and she talks went about to uh, Lincoln University. Mm -hmm. She came back to UMass and got her master's. Mm -hmm. And she stayed, she uh, retired from Four C's as I think she was the assistant de yes. uh, uh, attendant. One of the deans. You know, one yeah. of the deans. Mm -hmm. And she is still, and she's the only one home, really. Right. She's in Hyannis, and so she's Close home. Close enough to visit. Out. Peter lives in Bridgewater. Jimmy lives in. Um, Oh, damn, it's outside of Boston. Uh, well, it'll come to me later. It'll come. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so that's the life of the children. But they're yeah. all doing something, and all my grandchildren are in well, higher that's, education. That's the credit yeah. to you. Yeah. That's definitely yeah. a credit. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to talk a little bit about you right now, well, no. because <laughs> you've had, you have done some phenomenal work in terms of the art field, and you've done tremendous yes. amount of community service. And many of your um, artwork have been on display at the Smithsonian, mm -hmm. Zion Museum, the uh, Boston Museum of Fine Arts. So can you give us a little background about you and how you started with Some all this? Some of work? it. Uh, um, I, I took uh, night courses here mm -hmm. in Howard, uh, adult education. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the teachers uh, said, you know, Virginia, you should, I always liked to paint. I know mm -hmm. where it came from, but I okay. always liked to paint. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, I, I took the course in Harwich mm -hmm. night school. I was still working, lived on the job with okay. Paul uh -huh. and James, yeah. I, all on the job with me. We uh -huh. had an apartment okay. attached, yeah. But I took the night course, and that teacher uh, it, it said to me, "Would you like to study how to teach?" Okay. It will not teach you, you know, what you right. want to teach, mm -hmm. but they'll teach you how you can convey right. this to someone else. And I did, and I went to Fitchburg State in the summertime, mm -hmm. two weeks to get those credits up, and they gave me a certificate. Okay. And it really, the painting... Well, this was one of them, yeah, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, really gave me the extra money that I needed to keep Jimmy in college, because right. Peter was coming right up, 
And right. Rosanna was already in college. Right, right. And Rosanna lost her parents. Uh, so you have so to help. She, the only thing that helped her, and it's a blessing, was Social Security. Oh, okay. You yes. see? And uh -huh. she took advantage of that. Good. So uh, going to night school, then she was going to retire, that teacher. And she said, mm -hmm. I'm going to, to uh, you know, uh, 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 I'm going to put your name down that you're going to approach this. I said, well, fine. But okay. did. I substitute for uh -huh. her. So I, I did. I went went to Chatham. I worked in Chatham, Harwich, and Dennis. Mm -hmm. And it was all nighttime except right. Chatham. I worked daytime. So I worked days and nights, but Jack was always home mm -hmm. five day, nights a week. He played music Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. Saturday, right. So I had... I Enough didn't put my children out. They didn't yeah. have babysitters. Right. So, that worked out pretty well. Know, oh, yeah. That was yeah. smart. It was sneaky, but it was yeah. smart. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I didn't have too much trouble with the children. I oh, I was, good. you know, this, you know, I laid the rules down. Yeah. And they knew it. I never had to think of hard punishment because they knew I wouldn't get off my, right. you know, and okay. it's it was established in the beginning. Yeah. I didn't have any trouble raising them. It was hard times. Right. You know. And they gave up a lot because I would have to go every Friday to pick to him pick up. up yeah. And then we would take him Paul back, back. on Sunday. And Sunday, sometime, if it was uh, um, the money was right, we'd all go and okay. we'd stop and have lunch together. I was determined that Paul was not going to learn, lose his Cape Vernon. And he loved it. Yeah. He loved which it. Which is great. He was the first grandchild, or one of the few first ones. Uh, he could always go stay with his grandpa and grandma because he could converse. He could speak fluently. Oh, yes. really? Yes. And they had a good time. So grandpa would say, the others, they would speak, but they wouldn't understand. Right. You know, it was great. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have a hard time with Paul. I learned more uh -huh. from Paul being a, a, a student at Perkins right. than I gave. I gave the motherly type of thing, and Jack was <laughs> always there. Uh, but... Um, he was he would teach me things. Mm -hmm. One of my, I got around it, the best way I knew how is, Paul, just tell me what you need. Okay. I'll be the gopher. Right. And that's it. And that's how it worked. Yeah. He, yeah. I said, what are we going to do for summer, Paul? I'm going to be three months in. He said, Ma, there's a school in Ch uh, Chicago, oh, okay. the Hadley School for the Blind. Uh -huh. They will, they will I'll, I'll make up a list. You make it up. We ship it. And two months ahead, it'll all be here for the summer. Oh, okay. Jenny Doan was my best buddy. Oh, she was lovely. She was the uh, director here at the library. Was she not? Yes, quite a few years. All lovely through, lady. All lovely. through Paul's life, yeah. she got material for me from Chicago. Yeah, and she helped a lot of kids, too, in this town. I have to give her credit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she did um, a lot. She had a reading class. Uh-huh. Fascinating. She had a reading class, and no one, uh, I'd known of the Cape Verdean kids, I, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. they were. One day I came to the library to pick up the books for the doctor and the uh, uh, Mrs. Coffin that I right. worked for, because they'd said he'd read mysteries. Yeah. And my, one of my duties was to get the books. To the, Maybe yeah. And uh, Ginny Doan and I got going, uh -huh. and uh, she said, and I told her I was interested in getting some of a pro, uh, material so Paul wouldn't lay dead. Right. The worst thing is to have them idle. Right. You know? Exactly. And uh, she was very instrumental. Well, you know, so well, I, I think she was before her time. She realized she, education was important for everyone. She, that's yeah. where I heard yeah. it. Yeah. Like she education is the way. Time. And I said, mm -hmm. now this woman's library, and I'm, yeah. Yeah, she did I, a great job. No, she was great. But Paul's needs mm -hmm. was my director, and uh, we did well. Well, I have one other question I was going to ask you, if you could kind of tell us, if you had a message that you wanted to leave for your great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren for the future, or what would it be? Find out who you are. Okay. And be that person. Okay. Uh -huh. Just That's be that person. Good. It may not be like everyone else, uh -huh. but be real. Right. Be real. Mm -hmm. And if you know yourself, you can be real. That's true. Don't, don't yeah. be somebody else's image of me. What you see is like what you get. That, and that's yeah. important. That's, that's right. true. But yeah. it's always going forward. Right. You right. know, time goes forward. Yeah. I didn't have time to spend in the back because I was too busy going forward. That's important. And that's you know important. who always taught me that in what she did, Jenny Forts. Oh, I know. She didn't speak it. 
Right. But I followed Jenny had. Yeah. Well, and, and Maya you know Angelou just, is yeah. my other man. Is that your other idol? <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I know I had some guardian angel. Yeah. Well, you've done very well. Yeah. We're very, very proud of you. Well, and, uh, it's amazing uh, what you've achieved in your lifetime. And It, it was um, just the right thing to do at the time. Right. It was. There was nothing. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we kind of wrap up? And uh, uh, I'm just um, so impressed with I, you. Right now, the movement is all of a uh, diversity, everything, right. you know. And I understand it. Right. But I think sometimes... Um, we get too caught up mm -hmm. in what that person is doing. Right. I'm about me. Right. You know, and I want, if I can do something, if I'm here to do something, I'm going to do it. Right. And, you know, and painting, I needed to, I liked it, but I didn't know how. Right. But learning how yeah. became mm -hmm. the means of putting, uh, paying my tuitions with the children. For the and, children, and but benefit. they worked. And they worked every summer. Mm -hmm. And you know what I did with my children? Four fifths of what you make is mine. Right. One fifth is yours. So right. if you want to buy a hundred dollar sneakers, you know how much work you got to do you this to week. save up. Exactly. <laughs> I get. And you know they all worked out of one bank book. Bank book was in Paul's name. Uh huh. We used it when Paul went to Clark's. What was I kept the account. Uh -huh. We used it to pay off Jimmy because I put it in the, you know. In the account, yeah. The, Jimmy, when Jimmy finished. When Peter finished and went to Bridgewater, there was still a few hundred dollars in that bank book at the five cents savings. See? That book started the bank across what is the town office now. Oh, that's right. That was to be Eleanor open. Eleanor Lake yes. wrote my first <laughs> bank book, and it was called Education, and every one of the kids got something out of it. That's wonderful. Yeah. The right. last part of the book, I gave it to Peter. I said, this is our education is, lookup. That's wonderful. And all the children have done well. You, you've, yeah, you're just amazing. They're all paid for. All paid for. They're it. all paid for. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to thank you very, very much. Yeah. I appreciate you giving us your time, and I appreciate all the community service and oh. especially all the love that you've given all of us kids. Well, it's education was, uh, and you know, Ginny Dolan had a lot to do with put, setting that seed. Mm -hmm. She said, these books, I worked with Miss Oscar Cahoon as our family lawyer, a wonderful mm -hmm. man. Uh, and I worked for Mrs. Cahoon when she had parties and things like that. And she told me something. She was a well-educated woman. Mm -hmm. She was in the Navy. Okay. Yeah, she was in the and, um she said to me one day, we were in the kitchen, uh, I was teaching night school, okay. painting at night school, uh, and she was interested in it because yeah. she had a lovely home. She had, she picked up antiques, but she, you know, when, in the beginning, they struggled, yeah. but they mm -hmm. found their way. And she said to me, um, we were talking about something, and I don't know how it came about, but the gist of it was this. She said, Virginia... The library is the place you want to get familiar with. And I said, oh, I have a Virginia Dawn that helps me. Mm -hmm. She said, remember, going to the library is going to find the information you need or you want. Right. It'll always be on the shelf. Gossip is just junk for your mind. Mm -hmm. She said, don't let your mind be filled with junk. junk. Yeah. Save it in the library, it'll be on the shelf if you yeah. look hard enough. Jindo taught me how to find it. That was good. And thank goodness for those people. Yes. Yeah. And I will know them. Now. Yeah. And if when I got my certificate uh, at Fitchburg State, if there was anyone I wanted in the audience, yes, was Ginny Dawn and Ada Lovering. Oh. Well, they were looking down at you. Yeah. They were yeah, definitely I looking really down. Am. But there you go. You. It was yeah. my culture mm -hmm. looking towards. Her culture, uh -huh. and that's, everybody yeah, benefits. Anybody benefits because my kids come from, yeah. you know, and I like my kids. Yeah. And, you know, they're not bad. <laughs> and my husband was always uh, there, there, yeah. and he was he he was everything we did or I did or uh -huh. was was going on uh, was all right. He, I, you know, he was, uh, it was good. And he was even, always supportive. Yeah, yeah, yeah really, which yeah. Is good. Well, I oh. thank you very yeah. much. I like being and I, me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this has been great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it very and much. And you know what I'm going to finish this with? I'm going to give this to her in for real. Oh, to she Brenda. Borrowed. Brenda Collins, <laughs> yes. I Please. should appreciate it, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And you know what I like about <laughs> painting and quilting a lot? Uh -huh. I can give everything away. 
Yeah. I've never sold a quilt, and I've made a hundred or more. I know. But um, you've been very kind, very yeah. generous. The quilt that I wanted to give to um, Boston Museum of Fine Arts is the one I designed for Cape Verdean African quilt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, well, this well. has been great. So, I thank you. Yeah, and thank we appreciate you. it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.